Welcome to Accent on Education. I'm Laura Hoover, Culpeper County Public Schools Director of Communication, and I am here with Accent on Education to share the great things that are going on in Culpeper County Public Schools. Today, our first guest is Dr. Russell Houck, Executive Director of Student Services for Culpeper County Public Schools, and we're going to talk about a survey that's coming up for our secondary students. Welcome. Thank you, Laura. Glad to be here. All right, so we have coming up this spring the Youth Risk Behavior and Experiences Survey. So tell me about the Culpeper Youth Risk Behavior and Experiences Survey. Well, sure. Um, what we're going to be doing is asking our 7th to 12th graders whose parents have uh, allowed them to take a survey on all types of behaviors they may be engaging in or maybe not engaging in that would be considered risky. Uh, and the survey is going to ask questions everything from potential when they're driving, if they are driving, or if they're riding seat belts, to certainly substance use to include alcohol, marijuana, vaping, and then of course we ask kids questions about physical activity. How much exercise do they get? Are they involved on sports teams? How much screen time do they have? How often are they on their devices? And we ask them about nutrition, uh, and of course uh, some of the questions are very sensitive to ask questions about sexual behaviors they may be engaging in. And then we also ask some questions about the experiences of students. And, and those questions actually stem from the adverse childhood experiences, mm -hmm. which was a study that was done that shows that when children experience certainly adverse experiences in childhood, it has lifelong effects on their emotional function as well as their physical health. So we embedded some of those questions as well. And the survey is uh, soon to be delivered on the 26th of April when the kids come back from spring break. And uh, we're looking very forward to delivering this survey and getting the results. The genesis of this actually just stemmed, we had not really asked our teenagers about what they do when they're not being watched for many, many years, uh, to the point where no one really could remember the last time we had done a risk behavior survey. And we believe it was about 15 years. And just seeing anecdotally in our schools some of the emotional issues our kids were bringing, certainly the advent of certain substances we were seeing, and just an overall sense that you know childhood obesity was a problem in our community. We learned that through some surveys from the hospital. That we wanted to get some good information. And so in 17, uh, we worked with uh, University of Virginia, the Weldon Cooper Center, the Center for Survey Research, uh, and we delivered a 92 question survey. And that survey questions came from the School Health Advisory Board. And the School Health Advisory Board is a group of educators as well as community members, and their purpose is like the name sounds, is to advise our school board on issues related to student health. And so we went through the process of looking at questions, as I mentioned, from the Adverse Childhood Experiences. We looked at the PRIDE survey and, of course, the Risk Behavior Survey done by the CDC. Uh, added some of our own unique questions and uh, got the approval from our school board. Uh, and then we got UVA to sign off on it and we conducted that survey in the spring of 17. And roughly about 4,000 students, 7th through uh, 12th grade, participated in that survey. Uh, felt really good about the number of participants. University of Virginia then analyzed the results and wrote a report presented to our school board in the fall of 17. Okay, that sounds great. Now, is this survey anonymous for students? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you're asking such highly personal questions of students to reflect on things they're doing, as I say, when they're not being watched, mm -hmm. uh, kids need to know it's anonymous. Uh, so there's no way that any educator, anyone at UVA, or certainly not a parent, is gonna have access to see how their child answered. So that's one of the critical things we need uh, the community understand is that you're not going to find specific information about this kid. Mm -hmm. It's the aggregate results that's important for us to understand as a community. Right. Now what happens if a student's taking the survey and they come to a question that they just really don't want to answer? Well absolutely. No one's going to be standing over the, the student's shoulder and say, hey you skipped a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we're <laughs> going to ask the kids certainly and tell them up front. Um, these are sensitive questions. Mm -hmm. Some of these questions could be what we consider triggering. Uh, for example, one question asked children about if they've ever seen their mother be pushed or hit by mm -hmm. their father or another man. Uh, and clearly that could be a triggering event for the kid. Mm -hmm. We ask kids, for example, if they've ever been assaulted, either mm -hmm. sexually or with a weapon. Kid reads that question, they can be, oh my goodness, bad memories coming forward, they get emotional. We're going to tell them, skip it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to answer the question. Uh, and, and in preparation for that, we're going to make sure all our school counselors are on standby for any child taking the survey mm -hmm. that may need some extra support. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention that originally we were supposed to redo the survey in 2020, mm -hmm. March of 2020, because we want to do a survey every three years. Well, I think we understand what happened in March right. of 2020. <laughs> 
uh, actually just a couple weeks prior to the survey being delivered again. So the good part about this, if there is a good part, is that now we're going to have information post-pandemic. Right. So it's been five years since our kids have been asked these type of questions. And the University of Virginia is very, very interested in this study because of that effect. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to measure well, what were kids experiencing or engaging in in 17 and what impact conceivably could we show that possibly the pandemic had. Right. And so um, this information can be very vital to for getting good programming for our kids. Is parent permission required to take the survey? This is an opt-out. So parents are being notified, have already been notified of the opportunity for the child to take the survey if they wish their child not to participate. Uh, they're to notify the child's principal and those children won't be, uh, the survey won't be delivered to their Chromebook. And then once the results are reported, what happens next? Well, I'll tell you what we did in, after 17. So after the school board received the report from UVA in uh, September of 17, the School Health Advisory Board reconvened to actually look at the results. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at, okay, well, these are some problem areas, and what can we do, first of all, as a school, and then secondly, as a community, to ameliorate or help prevent some of the issues the kids were telling us. And I'll just give you a couple examples. One of them was uh, dealt with physical activity. We were seeing that a large number of our kids reported they don't go outside to play. Mm -hmm. They don't take advantage of the parks or the op recreational opportunities in our community. So we decided let's create some actual recreational experiences for our kids. And so we set up a series of field trips mm -hmm. to take our kids and expose them. So that fall, to me, the next year, we actually took kids in high school to Lake Pelham mm -hmm. to learn how to use the watercraft with the idea, mm -hmm. introduce kids to how to use the watercraft, maybe they'll come back on their own, mm -hmm. introduce their families to it, nice activity that helps with their physical health as well as their mental health. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also did a lot of school programming curricular changes. Mm -hmm. We realized that the questions related to substance use, that we were seeing a, uh, a rise in substance use, particularly with vaping, even in 2017. Not a whole lot compared to the national difference, so we weren't seeing we were an anomaly. But we realized that we probably need to start a substance use education earlier. So we got with health uh, teachers and PE teachers and started introducing some lessons as early as elementary school, particularly related to prescription pill use. We saw that as an area of concern. We already know in this community that the opioid epidemic mm -hmm. had impacted a lot of the adults and not that the children were using opioids, but we have a lot of prescription pills in people's medicine cabinets, on their counters in the kitchen or other places. So we started actually doing lessons with law, uh, law enforcement, the school resource officers, to help kids understand you don't take prescription pills from someone. Mm -hmm. You don't take mommy or daddy's prescription or grandma's pills and take them yourself. Mm -hmm. So those lessons now start actually in first grade. Okay. Help educating kids. So that was the role of the survey. The thing we did was really look at mental health supports. Mm -hmm. uh, the most startling information coming back dealt with a number of students reporting feelings of anxiety, extreme anxiety, signs of depression, and suicide thoughts. So as part of that, uh, the school board and school division actually started hiring more mental health professionals to serve in our schools. And we started off with elementary behavior interventionists, and those are qualified mental health professionals we mm -hmm. hired from the community to work for us. And we now recently, because of grant funding, as you know, we've expanded those to all of our schools. Mm -hmm. So this survey helped us get grants to help pay for some positions initially, and of course then the school board absorbs them and the grant runs out for more mental health supports. So, mm -hmm. so in addition to the curricular changes, we've had staffing. And also we want to point out that community organizations, because this is a community survey of sorts, mm -hmm. uh, were able to use this to get funding for their own programs. Uh, use services to abuse families as an example. Mm -hmm. They can use the data related to questions of domestic violence that we asked and where the kids have experienced that, or sexual assault. Mm -hmm. So they can use that data in their grant funding. Uh, so a wealth of information is there for community organizations to use to, uh, to get more resources. That's great. When will our students take the survey this year? Well, we should have already taken it the first week <laughs> in April, but uh, certainly University of Virginia was given this. That has to be approved by their institutional review board because it involves human subjects. And they had some questions at their March meeting, so I met with them uh, last week, answered their questions, and approval should be coming at any moment now. And we actually delivered the survey on Tuesday the 26th after we return. And that will be for students whose parents have said it's okay, opted, they did not opt out. 
Then we'll do makeups on Wednesday the 26th, so right after spring break. Okay, great. Now, is the survey exactly like the survey from 2017? I would say it's probably 90% because mm -hmm. we want to compare 17 results to 22, mm -hmm. but we tweaked it. The School Health Advisory Board, as long as the University of Virginia, some of their researchers, uh, we tweaked some of the questions just to get some more information that we didn't have before. Um, one of the things we asked, particularly this time, have kids used the recreational facilities mm -hmm. in our community? Are they going to the parks and are they using them? And so we certainly use that. And we tweak some of the questions related to substances mm -hmm. because the names that kids use for vaping products right. has <laughs> changed. They've got new names. And as we know often in, in street, uh, with street drugs, they're not called the actual scientific mm -hmm. name. Right. So we tweak mm -hmm. some of those to make them hopefully would get the kid, oh yeah, that's just what that is. So it'll give more validity to the, to the mm -hmm. study by having questions. Kids actually will understand what we're talking about when we ask that question. Okay. So when will the results be back? Well, uh, for being, uh, not foreseeing any complication, uh, the hopefully the report will be back in September. Uh, UVA Weldon Cooper researchers will come to the school board. Uh, that will probably be at a, a business meeting. That mm -hmm. will be, the results will be available on this very network. All right. <laughs> and so uh, parents will be able to hear the presentation or community members uh, from uh, Weldon Cooper Center researchers. And then of course, then the School Health Advisory Board will meet after that to look at the results, see what changes in programming or curriculum that we need to make in response to what mm -hmm. are the kids are telling us they're doing now. Okay, great. Now, if somebody w wanted to look at the report from the 2017 survey, where would they find that report? Well, it's easily found on the Culpeper County Schools main webpage. Uh, that report has been there since its release in the fall of 17. Uh, we've had it under the quick links for a while, but if you mm -hmm. go under parents mm -hmm. and then you go click through the uh, various options, you will see risk behavior survey. So you can see exactly the report that was delivered to the school board uh, from UVA in, in 17. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I think this is a really important um, survey for us, for our students to make sure that we're meeting their needs. And um, I think it's great to let the community know that this is coming and to be looking for those results maybe in the fall. Yeah, certainly, we hope so. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity to help tell the community about this important study that we're doing. Well, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. We'll be back shortly with more Accent on Education. Culpeper County Public Schools is now registering students for preschool and kindergarten for next year. Children who turn five on or before September 30th, 2022 are eligible to attend kindergarten. You will need your child's birth certificate, immunization record, proof of residence, and school entrance health form to meet Virginia Department of Education enrollment requirements. If you are unsure which school your child should attend, call the CCPS Transportation Office at 540-825-5446. Children who turn four on or before September 30th and meet VPI income requirements are eligible to attend preschool. Registration does not guarantee placement. The VPI coordinator will schedule a follow-up meeting with parents as additional documentation will be required. Preschool programs are dependent upon federal, state, and local funding. To register your child, please visit www.culpeverschools.org. Welcome back to Accent on Education. Our next guests are two of our Culpeper County High School seniors who are part of the Blue Devils Theater Program. Welcome Cole Edwards and Tyler mm -hmm. Bowyer. Um, so I'm really excited to have you guys here with us today on Accent. So tell me about yourself and your experience with the um, Culpeper County High School Theater Program. Um, it's been a it's been a really fun four years. Um, I started the theater program yeah immediately when I got a freshman year because I had experience doing it in middle school obviously so it was like mm -hmm. something I knew I was going to do and I knew Tyler was going to be there with me doing it because we had done shows together. But we get it was what like ninth grade, and we got shoved into the you know advanced acting class where yeah, all yeah. the it was just me. He and was you. my only friend for yeah. a while, <laughs> and that's how we became that's when we became like really good like like best friends. Mm -hmm. in that so advanced class. acting yeah. in ninth grade. Yeah, so you went straight yeah. to the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah because we auditioned for it and we Great. got in yeah, and um, it was very like intimidating because we were the only 
Yeah, freshman. Only freshman in that class. In the mm -hmm. class. And it was like, it's almost like we had to like prove ourselves to yeah. the, uh, yeah. And it's been very rewarding in the last four years being able to just kind of build our way up mm -hmm. to, like it, it, at one point we were the small fry and yeah. now we're like on top basically. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, and now we have these people like who are freshmen who, yeah. yeah, and then we like show, okay, this is how we like do mm -hmm. it here and like showing them how it works and stuff is really cool because you start from the bottom and you see these people yeah. who teach you how to do it and you kind of almost like, you like see them and you want to be like a little bit better in showing and greeting the new freshmen because it can be hard to like, because, yeah. you know, they, you know, they're so much, you're so much older than them. Yeah, I was really trying this year to, to be really welcoming mm -hmm. to the the freshmen yeah. and sophomores who are starting out. Yeah. yeah. It probably only benefits the program overall, too, mm -hmm. if you build up the people, because you'll be working with them. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. And in theater in general, not just in school, it's like you have to treat everyone very well, even if you, like, don't get along with them, because, mm -hmm. like, at the end of the day, you're going to be working with these people, and these people can make decisions, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. that you might not like, so you really got to make sure you treat the community with, like, respect. That's everything. great. Yeah. Those are good life skills, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now, um, Tyler, you were recently recognized in the school board meeting for earning the Best Actor Award for the One Act play. Tell me a little more about that. Um, so last fall, we took a musical to VHSL competition, which was um, a very big risk, but it was high reward since mm -hmm. we, we got first place at regionals, first at sub-regionals, and then um, first runner-up at States. Okay. And then in those three competitions, I was also given the Best Actor Award in each of them. And then in the state competition, I went all state for um, that. And Congrats, that's yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, so this year, that was the fall show, but this mm -hmm. year we've had four spring shows, two at the middle schools <laughs> and um, yeah. then at each high school, and they've all been packed. Um, so what do you all think attributes to the community interest in the shows this spring? Um, I think it's like, well, because you had that two years of like quarantining mm -hmm. and off and on with, you know, coronavirus. And now it's kind of like, it feels like, okay, well, this, you know, things are feeling more safe. Yeah. And so it's just exciting, like for people to be able to go out and see something with their, you know, family or mm -hmm. four family members mm -hmm. in the show. And it's also just like fun, like to oh, go yeah. see stuff like that. Mm -hmm. like, it's like a grand reopening, yeah, right. almost. Because we, I, I, I believe that we were the only school to do a show in last year with Greece because it yeah. was an outdoor oh, musical, right? Because like it's yeah. CCHS, because most schools were like, okay, we're not going to do one, but we mm -hmm. kind of were like, okay, no theater has a place, and we had uh, the outdoor um, Greece, which was it went really well, it especially really considering well, yeah. like the circumstances we were under and everything. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's great to see everybody back. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really great for the community because it's also it also provides a lot of people like um, like a low cost entertainment. Like mm -hmm. you yeah. go out and support your kid, and, and also mm -hmm. you get a f like a show. So. Yeah, great. Now Culpeper County High School, um, you guys did Les Miserables, which mm -hmm. is a pretty um, intense choice <laughs> for a high school show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this also, was this your last show as a Blue Devil? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that was, that was it. Show. Yeah, that's it. I okay. was like, yeah, those, yeah. So overall, how do you think it went from the performer perspective? It was, yeah, it was awesome. Like it was, it was so much fun. It, yeah. It's one of my favorite roles and one of my favorite shows I've been involved mm -hmm. in. It was, yeah. it's really different because since, since Les Mis is, it's not a traditional musical in a sense. It's, it's more of, yeah, it's, 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 it's mostly singing. Like there's mm -hmm. only like two lines of dialogue in the whole thing. It's mm -hmm. operatic. Operatic. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, um, I'm only 18 and right. seeing <laughs> that, seeing like opening that script book and seeing Oh, <laughs> like those are the those are the notes this? I have to hit, or yeah. that's how long I have to hold out this mm -hmm. note, or what, um, whatever I need to do. And it was like I I just loved the character so much. I played Javert, and he mm -hmm. played uh, Jean Valjean, which are if you're not familiar with the show, the mm -hmm. two opposing uh, characters in the show. So that was fun to play with him, you yeah. know, for our last show, uh, play that dynamic together. And 
but you know that kind of motivated me to be like okay well this music is really difficult yeah but the story is so good that I need to work really hard so that you don't even think about the music while we're performing mm -hmm. it right you know? and it's such a it's such a difficult show and the, the music is so different than any other show that I have a feeling that going back to a traditional musical in the future mm -hmm. um, is going to be pretty challenging yeah. because it, it, <laughs> it was it was like once you learn the music of Les Mis, there's you hear like there's certain it's like a puzzle like yeah. you start to yeah, see, it really see repeating is. patterns throughout it mm -hmm. and then once you learn it you have you unlocked you've like mm -hmm. it's it's so cool it's finding different melodic notes and like what connects and then you it's almost like it's a language too it's like you have to yeah. figure out this lame is language that yeah. you have to and it just becomes easier if you figure that out it was, it was so, a lot of fun so yeah. it sounds like this experience will really help you as you're For moving sure. forward i'm really glad i got to do it um, before mm -hmm. I left, yeah. great so what feedback did you get from others about the show i still get people i work at it's about time and mm -hmm. um i have a lot of people that will stop me and tell me like how much they love the show and mm -hmm. and, and how great like like i we just got a lot of positive feedback mm -hmm. from yeah. the show. Overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Well, say, yeah. well, I hear all the time people still raving about it. So yeah. That's great. That's great. So speaking of um, that performance, um, here is a video clip of the two of you after your final performance. So what was going through your mind at the, in that moment? Um, well, <laughs> there was one look. Like I was backstage and he was opposite of me, obviously, because you see us walk you know, together. And there was just a look and he was like, you know, let's do it. Because we had talked about it earlier and initially it was me saying, okay, let's do this. And then, then he kind of was like, ah, oh, you know. So we made this look and he was like, okay, like, let's do this. Like, come on, like, I'm going to walk out with you. I was like, no, like, don't, it's, you know, I don't want to get in trouble or whatever, you know? And then mm -hmm. it was like, okay. And then he came out with me and then it was like, and then like that crowd reaction and everybody yeah. and standing ovation, big standing ovation. And just like realizing, like it all clicked in that moment. And then like I started cheering up, which I don't do I, usually. I, at, the <laughs> end, at the end of the show, I was already... I was having I was having a hard time singing through the final song mm -hmm. like yeah. I was already crying yeah. on stage and and I, I I remembered us talking about it and I was like once I went backstage we were like we're doing it we yeah have to do it. yeah and that was Great. the fastest like I don't know how many seconds it was but it was a it was a millisecond uh -huh. yeah, in the grand scheme of things it was I'll never forget that that moment yeah, yeah. it was a big moment for you and mm -hmm. because you've been on that journey together from you know from way back mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. awesome well very good um so um let's talk about one of the other shows so eastern view high school just did mm -hmm. newsies and i saw there was a group from culpeper high school there supporting them um mm -hmm. did you all get an opportunity to see the show i did get an opportunity to go mm -hmm. and newsies is one of my favorite shows and i i think they really did a great job with it like they yeah. really really knocked it out of the park with awesome. it everything was spot on with the the costume design and mm -hmm. the set design and and all of the characters i i was just i was really i was really blown away by it mm -hmm. I, I was really it was it was really enjoyable awesome. two hours it was yeah. great great um, so let's think about you all as individuals for a minute. How has the theater program impacted you and your high school experience? Yeah, yes. I don't think I'd make it through. I, <laughs> high school I theater, I've, yeah. I've, I've really found, found myself mm -hmm. um, through the theater program. Like everybody in the theater program is so uplifting towards one another and it's such a tight knit community. I, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it through high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like seriously, because I, I mean, you just have that. It's like the thing you do. Like mm -hmm. high school, when I think about high school, is like theater. Like that's what mm -hmm. I think about. Mm -hmm. Like what uh, what um, I did that I enjoyed through it, and it led me to other creative outlets for myself, creating things with people I met in the you mm -hmm. know outside mm -hmm. of school. So yeah, I'd, I'd be very different today, I think. Great. So if you um, came across an incoming freshman who was trying to decide. 
should I should I become involved in theater? Um, I think I know how you're going to answer this, but what would you say to them? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, give it a give it a shot. Even mm -hmm. if it's not even if it's not your thing, mm -hmm. you've got to give it a shot. I mean, it's a great it's a great skill to have too, being mm -hmm. able to go up on a stage in front of a ton mm -hmm. of people, um, to really really shake those nerves out, and yeah. and it's it's just it's a really great skill to have. Yeah, it's it's a really fun ride, and it's. Can be very difficult at times, but I'd say you know, uh, go for it because, yeah, it's like that feeling of you just you. There's no feeling like getting up on stage, mm -hmm. and performing you know in front of people. It's mm -hmm. very strange. Like it's just this feeling in your gut that you just get, and I've never gotten it from anything else. Mm -hmm. It's only acting on stage. You've acted in front of the camera before, and it's just not the same. Like that feeling, it's really intense, and it it's just. Exhilarating. It's rewarding. Seriously, yeah. Great. Well, awesome. Well, you're both seniors. <laughs> yes. And graduation's coming. Yes. Um, so, what are your plans um, for for your next steps? Um, I'm currently having. I'm currently. I have a tough decision to make right okay. now. I'm planning on pursuing a theater major mm -hmm. at either VCU or NYU. Oh, yeah, that's a and good choice. And two <laughs> completely different directions, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm leaning towards NYU. I think, okay. I think there, I think there, I'm I'm going to get the most, like the, the best experience possible. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I'm going to get that. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah, um, I think like that's. After high school, it's an I guess an easier choice for me. I'm just gonna uh, do community college, but also uh, pursue acting in the areas of um, community theater, and possibly even trying to go like professional places in mm -hmm. Richmond for those mm -hmm. theater companies, maybe like a Shakespeare company, okay. but also doing other like creative endeavors that like excite me and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear that you're both planning to continue mm -hmm. yeah. um, because you are truly gifted um, you. young people you. and the world needs more of what you guys are doing. <laughs> so you. that's great. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today on Accent on Education and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode.